if I don't in here, they're in my car. I just realized. Um, oh, I hate to run you over there. It'll take me two seconds. I know right where they're at. I'll run. I will run. <laughs> so um, let me just say that, um, well, well, and we'll read some words while I'm running real quick. But um, so this week has been a whirlwind already, and we're just praising God for everything he's done. I'll just catch everybody up at once so you can hear what's happened. But um, on Tuesday, the food bank um, moved out. Monday, they got a lot of it out. Tuesday, by Tuesday, it was gone. And so Sandra and Rick sent me pictures. Rick is the guy who's overseeing the construction. And so I... Um, I left on Monday morning early and went to sectional council in Grand Junction. Oh so, <laughs> so I went over there. And hi, Connie. Hi, Connie. Hi. Hi, Connie. I just flew in. Yes. <laughs> good, good. We're glad you're here. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. better turn this on now so anyway so we um so i went to grand junction so then everything was happening here <laughs> i was jealous to be back as fast as i could so um on so monday i leave tuesday they leave wednesday it's um yesterday they pulled down the wall that was up in there to block off and put the food bank in now you know people people go Oh, Stephanie, why don't you want the food bank here? Well, the, the problem was it was misplaced. It was in the wrong place. It was in the middle of oh, our absolutely. sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and on top of that, they were renting, the, 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 the church, New Hope Community, was renting the half the sanctuary to the food bank. Now, the problem, the major problem with that is that if I would go in there, that was the city food bank. So if I would go in there and show the gospel, I would be in trouble. Oh, wow. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Interesting, interesting was right. We had oh. everything else going on in there, but we couldn't, you know, it wasn't ours. So I'm not against food banks. People have already said, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, no, I'm not against food banks. It's just, it's got to be in the right place. We had a food bank in here forever. We had it over where the bookstore was. And when I came um, back... I, um, you know, if I would have thought, I would have said, why don't we move the food bank over here? But they had already invested all that money to put in the sinks and all of that, so it wasn't, it wasn't possible. So I had no say-so on that whole thing. Anyway, and I really didn't have any say-so on the moving out. Um, that was the district council. They were the ones who came in, and part of that was just me building a relationship with them and just saying, hey, come and see what's happening in our church. <laughs> and so... So anyway, so when I went down to district, the district's uh, meetings, uh, my head supervisor, head guy, he goes, so Stephanie, <laughs> yeah. he said, thank you so much for what, you know, I said, listen, we got our sanctuary back today. I was able to say, today we got it back. Wow. And he said, he said, when I first came in, when you invited me in, he said, my jaw, he said, I hope you didn't see me, but my jaw hit the floor. And I knew, I saw, I saw the look on his face. He was like, <gasps> <laughs> and so, I bet it, but I had to wait a year and a half. So let that just be an encouragement <laughs> for you because sometimes it just takes a long time. We're on God's time. We're we are on God's, God's time. time. And even when it seems like it would be the just thing to do, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So can I say that even when we're in a place of injustice, we just have to keep moving forward. And so that's what we did. You know, I hope none of you guys knew any of the problems. We just were <laughs> like, praise the Lord. And, and then when things begin to move, we're like, okay, 
glory. And it's like running at breakneck speed right now. I mean, for Rick to get that wall down just like that. And then wow. we've, uh, we've built the new uh, sewer. We had the plumber in to take things out, reroute things. Yeah. We had a huge thing with the electrical. They've already got it fixed. I mean, if you knew what has... The bills have been, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the but the work has been phenomenal. And Rick and his crew are here, and they, I tell you, they work for next to nothing. I'm so blessed. Mm -hmm. They are such a blessing. I mean, they have a list this long. Yeah. He's already done two lists this long, wow. and um, we're on number three now. That he used, he said, Stephanie, we used um, five cases of. Um, oh. Hawking. The stuff that expands, oh expanding yes. foam. Wow. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> Five cases. So that's 60 cans all over this building to get it um, sealed. 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 All over that building to get it sealed. So actually when it gets cold, when you come in, it's actually warm. Oh. Exactly. And you're like, <laughs> why is it still warm? <laughs> and it's warmer over there when you walk in than when you walk in here. It is, I mean, it's nice yeah, in there. It is oh, nice in there. And the one blessing is we are sunken down into the earth a bit. Mm -hmm. And so everything will stay pretty much at yeah. the same temperature. And so my, our bills are so low. Praise the Lord. Praise I, the Lord. Now that I'm seeing the bills again, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I forgot yeah. how good these are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. So anyway, um, and what you'll see, we're going to paint this building just to make it look better until we can do the next thing. So we've had some paint um, given to us. And we are just praising God. And we got some really good price on some other paints. So praise the Lord. Well, there must be a building on fund, the too, that you raise money yeah. for. There's not a building fund. So I mean, literally you... everything that I have done in ministry over the past whatever years, I just put in one account. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. that I do in ministry that needs done comes out of that account. If I have to go to Kenya, I've got the money, I go. If we have to put it in a whole new electrical box, I have got the money. We just do it. You know, we call them up and say yes. Emergency we, plumbing. Emer emergency plumbing. <laughs> emergency sewer. We just do it. When uh, last, I remember when we were doing the other side, and I said, "I'm just praising God because I can order a carpet, not ask anybody, just order it." And it's and um, and wow. the price was lowered three times when we ordered that carpet wow. on the other end. It was shocking what God did. And I'm just saying, I, I, that's, I hardly ever ask for money, ever. I, I don't even know that I ever do ask for money. I just say, if you want to give, give. But I, don't, I just don't really believe in it. <laughs> I, don't, I just know God's will, God's bill. That's my mantra. And I'm always like, well, Lord, if you're going to send me to Kenya, then you've got to pay the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the bill. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, so, and he does. He is the faithful God. Yeah. And I can always remember yeah. Yeah. when we went to Sierra Leone, and I, I remember because at the time I wasn't doing meetings and I didn't have any really in, real income, and I thought, oh, boy, this is going to be an interesting one, Lord, because I was there for two months, and so you have all that expense. So I got back, and I'd been back like a month and a half, and, and I was sitting in a service and just worshiping the Lord, and the Lord said to me, so Steph. We didn't blow up the bank account, did we? And I went, oh, you're right. Wow. So it just, you know, you just, yeah. you just rest in the faithfulness yeah. of God, yeah. and that's. God is blowing up a lot of banks right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the Babylonian system will come down. Yes, Glory to God. And yes, so we we don't bank in that system. We bank in a different system. It's a God system. And so we did, I, I know I may have told this before, but we, it cost us $22,000 to do that other end, the, the bookstore where all of that is, $22,000. Can I say within months after that having had been spent, it was all back in the bank. Now, I don't do good accounting. I'm not a good accountant. I just don't do it. I just said... Well, glory to God. <laughs> and yes, and I probably told you the story of the heavenly accountant that showed up to me one day. And he said, Stephanie, you give away twice as many books than you sell. And I said, oh, that doesn't work on earth, does it? But I'm so grateful that you were the heavenly God. And I've had books multiply. I've had everything multiply in that bookstore because it's not my bookstore. And the second I start thinking it's my bookstore, yes. I start making mistakes. Oh, I love that. And so I just say, it's yeah. not mine. Yeah. 
it's his. And so whatever he's going to do, I'm like, yes, let's do it. Because what other answer is there? No, no, there's, there's just, that doesn't work ever. Now when people say no to me, I'm like, oh, what did you say? <laughs> Are you sure you want to say no? <laughs> anyway. Because I've seen too many things where people say uh, yes and get no. Uh, yeah. Oh, after the sanctuary is finished, you know, next door, what will take care of this? Will this be like a storage area? Or, no. Or, or no, we'll keep this as a fellowship. It'll be fellowship oh, hall, okay. That's, but we'll also have classes and things like that beautiful. here. Um, but our hope is to refurb the upper and get that, maybe, possibly, we're praying, that it'll be a new sanctuary with high ceilings, higher ceilings, and then we'll see. We'll and see what they And expand way. out into the parking lot because this lot beside us is ours too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're a ways away, so I try not to get ahead of myself on that, but it's exciting. It's, it's exciting. exciting. <laughs> and so, um, so when I was walking through, and so if anybody has a dream or anybody sees anything about this, I want to hear about it. But I was walking through the sanctuary one day, and I, and, um, I was like, oh, we need to do this, we need to, you know, thinking. And that was before everything was out of there. And so I said, so I just stopped, and I said, Jesus, I said, what do you want to do yes. in here? What's your plan? Yes. And all I could hear was dwelling place, tabernacle. Definitely. So we want it to be like the tabernacle. We want it to look like the tabernacle as much as possible. Worship. 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 And we want to keep it just, we want it to come in. When you come in, it, it's the house of prayer. Amen. My father's yes. house Amen. is yes. a house of prayer. Amen. And so that's, Amen. I mean, the same thing that we've done in here, we want to do over there yeah. at a higher level. So um, I'm thinking of, fab, you know, draping fabric from the top. I'm thinking of, you know, how we can soften things down to make it look like a tent of meeting. Um, so I'm just like, Jesus, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I want to make it beautiful. And because um, we want the glory to dwell there. Amen. 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 And that's because we are there, he's there. It just all works together. And so uh, it's going to be a mess for a little bit, as you can see. But I'll tell you what, they're working at breakneck speed. So I came down... The wall is down. The food the bank's gone. Yeah, go. everybody go look at it before oh, yeah. you leave. Yes. So just be careful because it is a construction yeah. site, but it's, they're not working on the ceiling or anything like that. But um, so so I went, so while I was at sectional council, they, they'd actually called me when I was in Kenya and said, can we interview you? And I said, um, let me get home and see if I can actually come to sectional. And I knew it was going to be just crammed in there because I didn't have... I just knew how much stuff we have going right now. And um, got home, and I, I said, yes, you, you, yes. So, <laughs> so while I was down there, they interviewed. There were three of us that they interviewed on stage that are new churches. And so um, I was one of those. And, and it was really, there are about 500 pastors that come into that thing. And, and so it was, it was fun. It turned out to be a very good thing because I met up with then- people really started talking to me and saying, oh, golden, I know now, yes. Okay, so that was good. Um, it was good in a lot of ways. The RV guy that runs the RV ministry, which there is an RV ministry that uh, retired uh, people join up into, and then if they know of a church that needs some work, they travel over to that place, they hook up in the parking lot, and they stay and whatever their wow. trade is, whether it's plumbing or, you know, wow. digging sewers or whatever, then they, it's called um, RV ministry, I can't remember, I can't, but there, but it's a specific with the Assemblies of God, so anyway, so, so I had a really long conversation with the guy while I was up there, I said, hey, Dan, Dan um, you know, this is what we're doing, and I said, here's some pictures, <laughs> look at this, we got a mess, you know. And so he was like, well, I'm coming down and I'm going up to Nebraska to a big meeting with RVers. And he said, what if I come through on my way down? So I, came, I drove down yesterday, and then he called me, he got a hold of me last night, and he said, hey, I'm here. Um, and I, I said, come in, go on in the building, I'll meet you, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Got over here, we toured the building, we toured this upstairs, we toured everything, 
And he had a whole lot of ideas, which now that I'm thinking, I've got to go over and tell Rick real quick what, my, what one of the ideas is. But um, he said, you know, we could get some people here just like that to get this painted. He said, they'll come out and spray it just like that, you know. And he said, I know another guy that will dig your sewer because we'll have to get a right. sewer line built out here so that um, we can put toilets in on this side because yes. I, I was just horrified every time I had, you know, we had to go outside right. when right. it was, remember when it was zero <laughs> and here we are freezing and having to go outside to the bathroom. I was just, just know that breaks my heart. So we, uh, we are looking forward to being in one building where with the bathrooms. But we're looking forward to putting in bathrooms here. <laughs> so we'll have restrooms. It'll be 2023 in this building. <laughs> so um, anyway, so just pray. Pray for the safety and the peace of this place and that um, nothing crazy will happen. Um, and, we, and I'm so blessed because Rick is so conscientious about everything that happens. You know, he's, he's very very careful with this building and I, I just he's honoring to what has been laid down here and I've been here since 1987 or, or I had a seven year break but since 1987 I've invested in this my husband has invested in it uh, as well as many other people and we just praise God for that investment and want to honor that investment and keep that and Susan's been here oh my goodness since 19 what 90 Five ninety anyway, long time in the nineties. In the nineties, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So when my kids were babies. <laughs> so and Connie, Connie's been around since I was. I think you were here before I was. Yeah, eighty two. So we want to honor that investment that's been going ongoing. This is this land has been dedicated to the Lord, and we agree with that, and we want to continue that. And, um, and so uh, the district is like, we're so happy about that. Thank you, Jesus. So, you. yes, praise the Lord. And so all that is because I went and built relationship with these people that I didn't yes. really know any of them. They didn't exactly. know me. I didn't know them. But I knew the Lord said, well, through my mom, my mom said, you go meet them and invite them. And I'm like, oh, no, mom, I'm not doing that. And my mom was like, yes. Don't do it. I know. <laughs> it's true. But I but anyway, she was right. And I say my mom was right. <laughs> As moms often are. As moms often are. And and she I said she said, When they come and dedicate your church, and I said, Oh mom, I don't want them to come and dedicate, you know. And and uh, she said, Stephanie. Yes, they will come and decorate. <laughs> okay, okay. I just am not a big show. You know, I want to read the word. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and so we went. So when I was down there, it was just good. Can I just say it was good? So I flew home yesterday because I wanted to get uh, back here to do. I, I flew home in the car <laughs> and prayed the whole way because I didn't know what the weather, what the roads were going to be. But the roads were perfect all the way home, and um, and then when I got home, I had to finish up my notes early this morning. So, but it'll be good. <laughs> Pastor, I got a quick question. Okay. Uh, if we want to donate to the Kenya Ministry, should that you know check out the dwelling place or yeah. how should that be? Yeah, and I just give it all directly to and okay. and what's really way amazing about anything Kenya because we're just specific to one church in the middle of that slum and orphanage yeah. and school wow. it goes all directly straight to 100 percent you know you know where you where where a lot of ministries you know you you'll you'll it'll pass through a bunch of hands this is going straight to one specific cause so we already have sent two thousand dollars to the uniform so we yeah. bought 200 uniforms for those kids nice. so you have 200 kids you can You'll see that are going to school, and I hope we get a picture of that. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> so that goes a long ways over there. Yeah. Yes. And so I don't. So I. Um, I Can I shut the door. Oh yes, we've got a lot of noise going. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you, dear. So um, I, there again, I hard I hardly ask, but you guys are such generous givers. I'm so blessed. I'm just so blessed because we don't have to. We don't have to work. Larry, 
God bless you. Can I can I just say this is Larry who ran the food bank. Can I tell you <laughs> that he has run a tight ship and when you walk through that food bank you did not smell food unless it was fresh food coming in, you know. But you did not smell a food stink. Right. Well, I and I told your higher ups. That. I said that man ran a tight ship and and just did so good. So I'm so blessed. It is. I'm sure it is. So we're so blessed. So thank you, Larry. Well, thank you and I actually am going to make him a quick escape if you need to talk to me. Okay. Okay. And so um, let's read. I would like for us to read. Um, since I don't have my glasses, and I'm going to run and get them. Let's read. Second Timothy, I'll give this to, um, oh, it's on the, let's start with a psalm. Should we do Psalm 34? Sure. Let's do Psalm 34, Connie, in the Passion Translation. And um, who, who would like to read, who would like to read Psalm 34? I'll read it. Oh, okay, okay why don't you guys split it up? Because at some point, it's, it's a long one, but... I do want you to slow down on points that you go, oh, that's really important, okay? Because that Psalm 34, we read it, is a really good we read it on Saturday night, and I will tell you, the revelation in this scripture is so powerful. I think we're going to start memorizing. So there's, there's a parallel to it you're going to tell us? Oh, you're showing both together? Now, this is Psalm 34, so we're going to do Psalm 34 while I go quickly do okay, it this okay, issue. Okay. okay. Taste and see that the Lord is good. A song by King David composed after the escape from the king when he pretended to be insane. Lord, I am bursting with joy over what you've done for me. My lips are full of perpetual praise. I am boasting of you and all your works so that all who are discouraged take heart. Join me, everyone. Let's praise the Lord together. Let's make him famous. Amen. Let's make his name glorious yes. to all. Listen to my testimony. I cried to God in my distress, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Gaze upon him, join your life with his, and joy will come. Your faces will glisten with glory. You will never wear that shame face again. Amen. Amen. This, this kind of reminds me of what she was just talking about, you know, the testimony and his glory in the new church. Um, but when I had nothing desperate and defeated, I cried out to the Lord, and he heard me bringing his miracle deliverance when I needed it most. The angel of the Lord stooped down to listen as I prayed, encircling me, empowering me, and showing me how to escape. He will do this for everyone who fears God. Can I say one thing? Mm -hmm. we, we, we think fear in, in present day terms, but fear back then was awe. Yeah. They loved God and they, oh, yeah. they just, they bowed to God. Mm -hmm. It's different than how we think of fear. Yeah. So oh, yeah. everyone who will see the awesomeness of God, mm -hmm. he'll be there for you. Drink deeply of the pleasures of this God. Experience for yourself the joyous mercies he gives to all who turn to hide themselves in him. Worship in awe and wonder. All you who have been made holy. For all who fear him will feast with plenty. Even the strong and the wealthy grow weak and hungry. But those who passionately pursue the Lord will never lack any good thing. Come, children of God, and listen to me. I'll share the lesson I've learned of fearing the Lord. Do you want to live a long, good life, enjoying the beauty that fills each day? Then never speak a lie or allow wicked words to come from your mouth. Keep turning your back on every sin and make peace your life motto. Practice being at peace with everyone. The Lord sees all we do. He watches over his friends day and night. His godly ones receive the answers they seek whenever they cry to him. But the Lord has made up his mind to oppose evildoers and to wipe out 
even the memory of them from the face of the earth. Yet, when holy lovers of God cry out to him with all their hearts, the Lord will hear them and come to rescue them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to all whose hearts are crushed by pain, and he is always ready to restore the repentant one. Even when bad things happen to the good and the godly ones, the Lord will save them and not let them be defeated by what they face. God will be your bodyguard to protect you when trouble is near. Not one bone will be broken, but the wicked commit slow suicide. <laughs> that's a, I like that image, you know, that's sort of macabre, but they're, they're, they're adding on over and over. Every time they do something that's hateful, every time they do something that is sinful, anything that's not of God, it just adds to their burden, and they don't realize the burden that they are adding to themselves. They hate and they persecute the lovers of God, which is what we see so much in the world today. But make no mistake about it. God will hold them guilty and punish them. They will pay the penalty. But the Lord has paid for the freedom of his servants, and he will freely pardon those who love him. He will declare them free and innocent when they turn to hide themselves in him. You know, when I, when I look at this and I think about this, what the, the Hebrew people, when they came out of Egypt and they kept complaining and mumbling and saying all this stuff about, oh God, why, why did you take us out from there? You brought us out here to kill us. Right. Over and over and over, their words. They said all these negative words. Mm -hmm. And finally God said, Okay, you get what you're asking yeah. for. You get what you keep talking yeah. about. And that's what the wicked don't realize. Mm -hmm. They are committing slow suicide with the words they speak because they don't understand the power of their words when they say the negative stuff. Right. When they don't see the awe, and awesomeness the of God. That's right. Yeah. So we just, <laughs> God will declare us free and innocent. Yeah. When Amen. we turn to hide ourselves in him, he Amen. will be there for us. Amen. Amen. That's so good. Take it away. So that was right at the end of that. Wow. Bummer, I missed it. But yeah, no. Powerful, isn't it? The wicked commit a slow suicide. What a powerful. Yes. On my assignment, I'm at the yeah, yes, and yes. Then, and we're happy you're here, Deborah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We're happy you're there. Yes. 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 Oh, no. It just breaks my heart when mm -hmm. a transvestite comes up mm -hmm. and makes this, right. putting this before, talking about how what they're wanting to do is give them freedom to come into their true identity. Mm -hmm. I'm going, and they twist words right. to define them to mean right. what they're not saying, and they're putting it in bills. And it's just not slow suicide for themselves. They're trying to take a nation down with them and trying to destroy the culture of the righteous because they are used key words that are sound right. Yes. They're wicked. They always do that. Yeah, they always do that. So, yeah, so that's the encouragement that I get. And so what the Lord was dealing with me is that his word is faithful. Amen. His word is true. His word is established. Don't listen what they're saying because there's a greater law that is in the kingdom of heaven. It's a law of liberty. It's not one of bondage and fear. He wants his people set free to live a life that will glorify him. And so while he's having me to listen to them going, God, do you Stay in the word. Yeah, stay in the word. Well, and yeah, when it, yeah, yes, I do. Oh, blood. I mean, it's a myth for a blood bad. Constantly. And then what he had and and this when this person was doing this. And so my assignment is to release the kingdom of heaven. So he's making his decree. He's well, he is making his decree. And I'm 
Open the heaven. Fire. <laughs> Lord, I cleanse that in the blood of Jesus. Let your fire purify, purify. So, and then I just pray in the spirit and stuff, then leave that. And when he was doing it, when it was breaking my heart. And so on this other side, then the chairperson, they had to get another chairperson. And so it just takes, I believe that there's a rippling effect, uh -huh. yeah. but it still is going Amen. on, you know. Yeah. So when I hear you, yeah. you know, God is saying, but to be patient yes. and yes. to keep praising yes. him and thanking him for who he is. Yes. Yes. Yeah, keep the love going, yes. and that's what's going to yes. do it. Amen. Because you're shifting the atmosphere every place. Yeah. So yes. um, okay. there, there, is, there is something huge to that, because a lot of times when things are happening... We think, well, God, won't you fix this quickly because of the evildoers? But remember what when we were studying the old, the um, <clears throat> last days, and we were we were talking about how God allows evil to get to its highest yeah. form to come into which, its fullness. To come into its yes. fullness is the exact term. And so for that to happen, we just think, wait, why would you allow that? But it's the great mercy of God. And, and you know what? I don't understand <laughs> that mercy. Um, I have to say, the and the righteousness. exactly, and I don't, we understand about this much of it. Mm -hmm. Even when we have all of the word of God, we still only grasp a, a, a small part. And so when we see God allowing these things to take place and get to their highest extent, and I do praise God that there is now a finally people are opening their mouths and the, uh, you know, the very wicked things that have happened. I, the Bud Light thing was a real good example yeah. of that. Well, then the Tucker Carlson thing. Yes. You know, people were like, watch out because now all of it's going to be, it's going to continue to really come right. out. They just set him free from a platform yeah. and now he's going to really say yeah. what he's thinking. <laughs> on. He's going to really, you know, it was like, Tucker, what's on your, what's really on your yeah. mind? Now we're going to really know what's on Tucker's mind. And guess what? He, the money is not an issue for him. He's going to, he's going to do way better. And I hate to see you know, Fox go down further, but they will go down further. If they're not going to stand, the righteous won't stand with them. So, if they're not going to stand for the right, with the righteous. I heard yesterday that Fox was owned by Disney. They are owned by the Murdoch group, and I think Murdoch probably has his hand in Disney, and I'm not sure how all that works, but you're probably right at some point. Yeah. And Disney is a, a very interesting. Now, those of you that were here for John Reed Austin, and he talked about uh, King Charles yes. being the Antichrist, which is possible, we don't know, and, but he went through, I listened to him, I listened to because I wasn't there that day, but I listened to him talk about it, and at first I was like, no, nope, I don't believe that, then I listened to him, and then I'm like, oh, oh, then did you see, Disney said, came out and said, we don't want to be under DeSantis, or under the laws of Florida. our state, yeah. We put ourselves under King Charles. What? No, King what? George. King George. The laws of King George, going back to King George the Third. Yes, right. and then, back to old, old but law. they also brought up King Charles because I was like, King Charles. Yep, they want to follow. Maybe John's other, right. Other <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. Yeah. Shocking. So. Hey, can they secede and do that? I don't have a clue. There's a legal battle Maybe taking place right it now. It is a legal. It, it's a legal battle. So it is interesting. We fought a war to get away from King George. So, um, <laughs> so let's just keep our eyes open. Um, you know, that still doesn't say that he's the actual guy. We don't know. We just don't know. But I'll tell you what. Um, interesting. I, Cliff High. If you, yes. if you go out, uh, yes. if you go online and look for Cliff High. Cliff High speaking and his writings, he'll explain the way law works and how law has changed from the time when we were under King George and the type of law that existed then, the type of law that existed after the revolution into the Civil War where law changed dramatically and under what laws we operate today. Yeah. And it'll surprise you completely. I mean, when you begin to understand the type of law 
we're actually under a form of maritime law, right. which is really weird. Right. But he can explain this, and it'll help you understand how these guys in Disney are trying to do an end run to avoid the current law. And there is a certain amount of uh, precedent for it, but as long as the government of Florida holds their feet to the fire, they won't be able to get away with it. But so they're going to try. It's cliff high, just like it sounds, and it, apparently that's a recent cliff high. Within the last six months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then the other the other one is Derek Johnson, who does um, military law, and he'll explain military law. So that's another one. And he's a younger guy. Of course, everybody's getting younger now. Right? <laughs> as we get older, they're all young. Oh, that's a young guy. <laughs> H I G H. Yeah, it's just like it sounds. Yeah, just well, like it sounds. You're asking the deaf. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, nope, not hide. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Okay, there. so that says Cliff High says that's June eighth. It, it, it goes it? back probably into November there's, of last year. Yeah, there's a February twenty three. So yeah. Anyway, just check him out. Yeah, you'll, on YouTube. You'll find a lot of information that'll surprise you. Yeah. I don't know necessarily the truth of all of it, right. but man, he can get you thinking. Yeah, that's the thing. Let's yeah. now, let's keep thinking, yeah. and let's keep doing our research, and uh, we'll know. Let's be good Bereans. Let's be yeah, good right. Bereans. Get in the Word of God. That's Amen. extremely important. Okay, so now let's get to our covenant notes that are on there. So we're going to read a whole lot of word. What was God doing before he created the heavens and the earth? We're going to take about just a little bit to read what the Word of God says about this, and then we'll move forward. But <clears throat> let me just read off real quickly. Um, I, I'll do this whole study one, one, one week. We'll do the whole study. But he, what he was doing before he created the heavens and the earth is he was um, having counsels with God. He was talking to God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They were counseling with each other. And, you know, there were high, there was high wisdom in heaven. There's high angels. And he was counseling with these elders, these high people that he created. And, he's high. and who can teach God other than God? God is the only one who... He was creating angels. He was writing books. Amen. He was... Um, he was... Um, planning our lives. Planning our lives. He was making the plan of the ages. Before he created the whole earth, he made the plan of the ages. The inception of the church, that was before he created the heavens and the earth. Before time existed. Before time existed. The provision of salvation was already done. Amen. The election yes. of God's people, yes. Yes. he was doing that. He was preparing his kingdom. He said, this is my kingdom. This is how I'm going to set up my kingdom. And let me see if there's another. I have a ton of scripture in here. And that's, okay, that's the seven. So let's read this scripture together. So. 2 <clears throat> Timothy 1, through, 1, 6 through 10. I'm writing to encourage you to fan a flame and rekindle the fire of spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. So never be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Or be embarrassed over my imprisonment. Now that's Paul. Who's, or yeah, Paul who's talking to Timothy. So don't be embarrassed when we see somebody imprisoned. But overcome every evil by the revelation of the power of God. He gave us resurrection life and drew us to himself by his holy calling on our lives. And it wasn't because of any good we've done, but by his divine pleasure and marvelous grace that confirmed our union with the anointed Jesus, even before time began. So before the creation even happened, he already had this set up. This truth is now being unveiled by the revelation of the anointed Jesus, our life giver, who has dismantled death, obliterating all its effects on our lives and has manifest his immortal life in us by the gospel. Isn't that powerful? Okay, so I will read this one just to go for time. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a gift of love from our wonderful Heavenly Father. 
Father of our Lord Jesus, because he sees us wrapped in Christ. Okay, I'm not going to go fast through that because I want you to see. This is a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father. People say a lot of times about the, the Father, they say, oh, he's an angry God, no, he's the Old no, Testament, no, 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 no. you know, this angry, wrathful God. I want you to see, Jesus was our love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father, Amen. the Father of our Lord Jesus, Amen. all because, and he sees us through this Jesus who's wrapped around us. This is why we celebrate him with yeah. all our hearts. And we're talking about the Father. Yeah. We celebrate the Father with all our hearts. You know, we get, uh, we get focused on Jesus. And we forget the Father a lot of times, right? Yeah. But it's the Father who did all this. The Father who came up with the plan. The Father who said, son, would you be my son and go? And Jesus said, yes, because I love you, Father. And when you read John 17, it's like, Jesus saying, yes. Father, we love each other so much. And so, Father and Holy Spirit, can, can, they, can they know the love that we have for each other? Can they be in the middle of that? Last week, I hope you caught when we all stood to get when We had the three stand up here and be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That was the love that they had to each other. And they said, oh, let's create this. Oh, it's good. Right? So, yes, it's good. Let's do that. So, in love, I should have circled that, he chose us. Before he laid the foundation of the universe. Praise God. Because of his great love, he ordained us. That's okay. <laughs> so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes. With an unstained innocent. Does Jesus stand there and say, oh, she's guilty of that. Oh, he did that. He's guilty. And that is a spider. <laughs> okay, Not you're guilty. More. You're in the wrong place. Okay. <laughs> That's why I do my exercises. <laughs> you know, this is so important because we are the ones that's, that see the stain still. Right. We're the ones that it's keep true. on seeing us as guilty. And we put it on us because right. the accuser is always there to, to agree with that. Right? But he doesn't see us that That's way. That's exactly right. So what do we do? What do you do when he brings up a sin? Do you go, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Talk to dad. We and talk to my dad. dad knows I'm not that way. So, That's and I've said... Jesus. That's why I need, and why I have Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, you know, when you get that twinge of guilt, oh, I should have done this to my kids when they were little. I should have been doing this better. You say, I disagree, enemy. Amen. Yes, you're probably right. I should have done more. I blew it. But I, I blew it. Yeah, that's right. That's where we agree with the, the accuser. Yes. But we say, thank you, Jesus, that you Amen. helped me do the very best that I could Amen. do. And everything that I couldn't do, you're going to do way better. And I give you permission to do whatever you're going to do. I'm not going to go back and try to make it right. I'm not going to go back and uh, go, you know, lecture my kids on this, that, and the other. Let me say it doesn't work most of the time, right? And a lot of times it makes it worse. Does it make it worse? It doesn't, yeah, let's all hold our hands up. We know it doesn't work. But if we, uh, if we say, Jesus, I just thank you that you're doing it, and I give you permission, and Lord, keep me from trying to go back and fix it. Yeah. And, and this is true of everything. It doesn't matter yes, if kids right. or no kids. Right. Um, it's true of relationships. It's true of things. You know, I, every once in a while I'll wake up embarrassed. I'll think, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. It works in everything. You just go back and you say, thank you, Jesus, that you dealt with that. Huh? Isaiah 38. Oh, okay. <laughs> he our sins behind his back. You got that right. right. He puts our know. sins behind his Isn't that the truth? Praise the Lord. And so it's the enemy that wants to put them right in front of our face. And we say, we just have to, just listen. Right this there. Is, this is the establishment of, of, of justice in our own lives and the establishment of a great habit. Don't go, oh, I'm feeling so guilty. We say, no, thank you, Jesus. Thank right you, God. There. Right there. Yeah. Right say, yeah, say it, dear. Thank you. Indeed, it was for my own, own peace, peace that I had great bitterness. But you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all, all my sins, sins behind, behind your back. back. Wow. I tell you what, so that is Isaiah what? Isaiah 38, 38, 17. 38, 17. 
So if you are being hounded by guilt or by uh, being accused by the enemy or the enemy's bringing up junk, or, fear. Just, or, or fear, fear, or fear, because or we are not a slave to any of that. Right. And that's exactly what the enemy would love to do, is make us be a, a slave to that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Connie. That was good. Okay. All right. Okay. So in love, he chose us before the foundation of the earth. And, and we have an unstained... Amen. Listen, Amen. memorize that scripture. Memorize this scripture. Memorize uh, so, uh, Isaiah 38. 17. <laughs> 17. Memorize that or write it out on your... And put it on your mirror so you see it every day. Especially if you're being accused of something. For this is... For it was always in his perfect plan to adopt us as mm -hmm. his delightful children through our union with Jesus, the anointed one, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace for the same love that he has for the beloved Jesus, he has for us. And his unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. Isn't that amazing? So here's Isaiah 46. Remember the miracles of long ago. Acknowledge that I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. We're saying, Father God. I'm the Father God, and there is none like me. I declare from the beginning how it will end, and I foretell from the start what has not yet happened. I decree that my purpose will stand, Amen. and I will fulfill ev my every yes. plan. Yes. Okay, do you have something right now that you're looking at, and you're like, Boy, this is impossible. This is impossible, right? We all have that. I can go walk right through that sanctuary and go, this is impossible. <laughs> How many times did I do that over the past three years? Yes. Can I bring up the six-day war? Yes, the six-day war in Israel. The impossibility. It was impossible. Remember, I have the impossibility. Yes. This is what happened. Remember the six-day war. This is what I know. You're exactly right. That's the statement that we make. Mm -hmm. This is that I know. This is what I know. Mm -hmm. The faithfulness of God has never once left me or yeah. let me down. Right. Glory to God. He Glory. will fulfill. So I walked through. I, every time I'd walk through that in there, and, and I would think, this is impossible. This is impossible. This is impossible. And then I would say, but the faithfulness of God is with us. Amen. And I declare Amen. that this is going to come back to its original purpose. I pray had almost everybody in here declare that with me at some yeah. point. We would walk through there and we would say, this is coming back to its original purpose. And I tell you it looked impossible. There were so many things that I could say. But praise, but God, right? But God. And we, you know, the Lord has made too many promises to me to not fulfill his word. I believe his word, and I just say yes and amen. Even though it looks impossible, we just say, nope, the faithfulness of God. So here's, I love this. And Isaiah, the fearless prophet. Don't you hope that someday Jesus will say something to you, and he'll say, and Diane, my fearless prophet. Won't you just go, oh. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Sandra. My fearless accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yes. Right? Yes. Stephanie, the fearless cook. <laughs> she will cook everything. <laughs> okay. Right? We, will, we are the ones who are fearless. I want to be the one who is fearless in whatever is put before me. And I will dare to declare those who found me weren't even seeking me. I manifest myself before those who weren't even asking to know me. Amen. How many of that was you and me before we knew Jesus? Wasn't even asking. Didn't even know I needed you. Right? I wasn't even seeking you. But look, look who found me. Yet regarding Israel, Isaiah, this is why we can really thank God, because whenever we, I see Israel, I say, Lord, you're so faithful to Israel, I know you're going to be faithful to America. I know you're going to be faithful. With love, I've held out my hands day after day, offering myself to this unbelieving and stubborn people. And I see that's not just Israel, that is America too. All right, praise the Lord. So from the foundation of the earth, God was 
saying these things about us. Praise the Lord. Here's the list of covenants real quickly. The Garden of Eden, Adam, Noah, Abraham. I hope to have a notes for you at some point. I just haven't got that all formatted yet, but I will. Um, Abraham, Moses, Israel, David, Yeshua, the new covenant, Jesus. Now let's look at the Eden covenant. I love it because when you're going through a lot of the books, they'll use all these big words, the Edonic covenant. Right. I'm like, right. I'm so tired of academic. It, <laughs> academic garbage really does not help me. But if we just say, let's just look at Eden's covenant, what God said about Eden. Okay, so when, when we talk about Eden, what are we talking about? We're talking about Genesis, the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the garden. Right? Right. The Garden of Eden. Adam, and Eve. Adam and Eve. So we're talking about the very beginning. And we're going to start right here at Genesis 126. Um, I want to say that we are going to go through not only Genesis, especially 1 to 15 um, together, we'll go through it, but we're also going to tie in the book of Enoch. Um, I started reading That's Michael Thickus's book on Enoch, and I am completely blown away. Yes. So um, we're going to tie them together. And so as we go through that, I, I say Genesis 1 to 15 because um, it's 2,500 years of history, and it's massive. It's like every line has a book you could write about it. So, um, we're going, so even what we're going through today, we'll do again in a different way. Because there's so much in Genesis. All right. And we'll even bring a little Jubilees in. And we'll bring Jubilees in. We'll bring in every extra book that um, are still considered canon in some cases. Okay. Then God said, let us make, let me give this to somebody. Would you read? Would you read this? Sure. Okay. Um, are we reading here? Then uh, God said. Then God said, let us make a man and a woman in our image to be like us. Let them reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the livestock, over the creatures that creep along the ground, and over the wild animals. So God created man and woman, and shaped them with his image inside them. In his own beautiful image, he created his masterpiece. Yes, male and female, he so created them. So keep up the good work. And God blessed them in saying his love and saying, reproduce and be fruitful. Populate the earth and subdue it. Reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creature that lives on earth. And God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant growing throughout the earth. Vegetables and every fruit bearing tree with its seed within itself. They will be your food. So so in the beginning, yes, we were a vegetarian, okay? So is, it's very interesting because as we'll get into this, you'll see what God says is food and what God says is not food. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just very simple. You know, why can we have people now that say, oh, I'm just a vegetarian, and not understand the rest of Scripture that also gives us uh, permission on other things and calls it food? And so we want to be careful when we are actually seeing this because this is God's covenant with us. Exactly. This is your food. I'm giving you food for every day. Okay, go ahead. Uh, they will also be food for every animal and bird and every creature that moves on the ground, every creature with the breath of life. And so it happened. God surveyed all he had said, made and said, I love it. For it pleased me great, pleased him greatly. Even gave way to morning, day six, Genesis 1, 26. Okay, so, so this is Eden's covenant. Now, the, the thing you have to have with covenant is you have to have requirements and promises. In every covenant, there's a requirement. In other words, I will do this and you do that, okay? So, what would Eden's covenant be? Let us make man, and this is God talking to himself, let us make man in our image. The secondly, he says... Let's give man dominion over the earth. Now, he made him king. that's a couple of things. He's saying, I, I expect you to be to do, have dominion over the earth. Don't let things run roughshod over you. Yeah. Think of Oklahoma and the weeds. Order. Don't let the weeds run over right. you because they will, right? Have right. you right. ever lived in a in place where they are? It's growing like crazy. Gangbusters, it'll take over your land. Be blessed. Be fruitful. Be multiplied. This is why when we have abortion, things like that, God never once said, stop having babies. No. Never once. Never once did he tell the animals, you know, don't, don't have any more uh, babies. It's always be blessed, be mm -hmm. fruitful, 
multiply. Here is what you'll eat. And he's, so here's the, the requirements. Um, dominion, and who is this covenant with, this Eden, Eden covenant? Who is it with? Adam. Man, Adam, and God. That's right. Okay, those are the only two that this is going to be over. Now, Genesis 2, 1 through 7 is a parenthetical section. Remember in the Old Testament, or in the, excuse me, in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, we stopped and we had parenthetical sections. Yep. Remember? Yep. And a parenthetical section means God stops talking about, what, and stops moving forward in the chronology, yep. in the timeline. He goes back and he says, okay, now I'm going to expand on what I just did. Okay. Can you imagine when he created one day, can you imagine one minute of what he was creating? It had to be so massive. So don't you wish we had that book or that video? <laughs> because one day of creation would have been way amazing to watch. I hope we get to watch it someday. We will. And I believe we will. I believe. We will. So, um, so he, then on, in chapter 2, he stops and he says, now, let's go back. Let me talk about what I just did. We just did. We created six, seven days. Okay. So, and so the creation of the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had completed creating his masterpiece. Where his masterpiece? The earth is his masterpiece. Oh, my goodness. By the seventh day, God had completed. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. So God blessed the seventh day and made it sacred. Because on it, he paused to rest from all of his work. Now here's the footnote from Passion Translation. God was not tired, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, a lot of times on, on Saturdays, I'm like, <laughs> what can I do, Jesus? It's, you know, the task full. <laughs> God wasn't tired. He simply was going to rejoice in his masterpiece. Yeah. God's work in us, for us, and through us continues through time. Mm -hmm. God's last day of creating, the sixth, was the man's first day. It was our first day. As soon as man was created, Man, I wrote, sorry, I capitalized that. Man rested with God. In this way, he became one with God, dwelling with him and resting in his accomplishments. Oh, yeah. So I want you to think about that. Mm -hmm. So many times people will come and say, oh, I was laying in bed and Jesus was in bed with me. This makes total sense. In America, we've sexualized everything, mm -hmm. which is so ridiculous. Because it's not what it is. It's rest. It's what you're intimate with. It's what you're close to. When you're laying in bed with somebody, it's, and, it, and it's Jesus. I, oh, that's a really good thing. I'm always like, oh, that's a really good dream. And they're like, <gasps> no, listen to me. It's pure. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. It's pure. Okay. There is no mention of evening and morning completing the seventh day. For God's Sabbath rest endures forever, and there is no night there. Amen. Our true Sabbath rest is found in the finished work of Christ. Yes. 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 There was no night. Every other one, it says night and day is first day, night and day, second day, night and day, third day, but not on Shabbat. Only one day of creation was given a name, the seventh day, which was called Shabbat. Hebrew root for Sabbath contains two letters. Boy, I've got that messed up. That mean to return to a seat, to rest and learn. Isn't that good? So this is the account, the generations and the genealogies. We're at verse 4 in chapter 2. This is the account, the generations and genealogies of the heavens and the earth after they were created. Okay, I'm going to point this out now, but we will do the whole study of the accounts in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis was not one scroll. The book of Genesis was multiple scrolls. So what you just had um, in Genesis 1, that was probably one scroll. 
Now we're going to have school number two. This is the account, the generations and the genealogies. And it will say this over and over, and we'll go through all nine of them. They're called the total death versions, but it's really powerful. After you understand it, then you'll go, oh, this is a book of books. So Genesis wasn't just one book. It was many books, many scrolls. Okay. This was, so this was the scroll of the heavens and the earth after they were created. At that time, Yahweh God created the heaven and the earth. There was yet no vegetation, grains of the field, or shrubs sprouting on the earth. For there was no one to cultivate the land, and Yahweh God had not yet sent rain. In those days, a mist arose from the soil and watered the whole forced face of the ground. Yahweh God scooped up a lump of soil. So who wrote this book? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think God wrote this with his finger? Oh, yeah. With his pen? Because there wasn't a man yet. So the man didn't write it. Nope. Now God may have dictated it to Adam, right? Could have. Just like he dictated other things to other men. And women. I believe there's some women in there. We oh, just, don't yes. get to, just don't get to hear about it. God scooped up a lump of soul, soil, sculpted a man, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul, a nephesh, a, what is it, a ruach. He blew in the ruach of life. Then Yahweh, God, planted a lush garden, paradise, in the east, in the land of delight. And there he placed the man he had formed. Okay, so remember, we're looking for requirements and promises. So chapter 2, verse 8. Who would like to read this? Somebody. I, I did look up why did God use Yahweh, or why did... Um, why did Brian use Yahweh God? He, in Genesis 1, 1, he uses Elohim through the whole chapter of 1. And then he skips to Yahweh God because it's the most powerful God. Well, but it also brings Yeshua into it's, that. It's, yes. his, it's his friend. Right. He is now a friend of Adam That's at good. this point in time. That's so good. That it's, a, it's a deeper relationship. Elohim is here. Yeah. Here I am with you. Yeah, I, amen. I agree with that. That's good. Okay. Then Yahweh God planted a lush garden of paradise in the east, in the land of delight, and there he placed the man he had formed. Yahweh God made all kinds of beautiful trees to grow there, fruitful trees to satisfy the taste. In the middle of the garden he planted the tree of life, or the life-giving tree and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yahweh took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to work and watch over it. And Yahweh God commanded him, you may freely eat of every fruit of the garden, but you must not eat of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will most certainly die. So there's a requirement right there. What was the requirement? You, you can eat from this, but not from that. You can right. eat from this. You can eat from every every vegetable, every 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 plant, but not from that. Are are you listening to the news and the garbage coming out that you know we're going to make you eat bugs now? Yeah. Have you listened to that? Which is a bunch of garbage. Mm -hmm. So I just listened yesterday. They were talking about bugs and and the eating of bugs and how there's so many bugs that even you can get by with eating like during famine, but some of them have so much toxicity right. in them that it over time it will harm you, and you can't eat them for a long period of time. So there's a nefarious thing. Putting it in the flower. Putting, putting the <laughs> right, in the flower. right. You have to be, I put, your, put your flower in the freezer <laughs> and freeze the bugs <laughs> out to kill them. Okay. Okay, where did we end? Okay, yes. Okay, so what was the requirement? You can eat this, but not, not that. And the promise is, I think we'll read the promise down here. Then Yahweh God used the portion of Adam's side and skillfully crafted a woman and presented her to him. Um, something that um, Brian noted, he said, notice that the woman would be twice refined. If God refined dirt to make Adam, then 
she would be the twice refined because she was made from Adam's side. And I thought that was, oh, that's a good thought. That's a good thought. But just remember, we're all dirt. <laughs> okay, we've got to remember. Okay, then the scripture says, we're like grass, we fade and wither away. Okay. Presented her. Then Adam said, at last, one like me, her bones were formed from my bones, her flesh from my flesh. This one will be called woman, for she was taken from man. For this reason, a man leaves his father and his mother to be unselfishly attached to his wife. They become one flesh as a new family, and the man and his wife felt no shame, unaware that they were both naked. Now, when I was reading that this morning, I thought, wait, neither one of them had a mother or father. Right. Why did they say that? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So, anyway. That's just another aside we'll, we'll catch in heaven. Okay, so next we're going to look at Adam's covenant. Um, and this is Genesis 3, 1 to 24. This is God's agreement with Adam after sin became a part of the picture. Who would like to read? Susan, would, are you up to it? Um, I can't okay. see. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I totally understand that. Now the snake was the most cunning of all living beings that Yahweh God had made. He deviously yeah, asked the woman, did God really tell you you must not eat from any tree of the garden? But the woman interrupted, we may eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden, except the tree in the center of the garden. God told us, don't eat its fruit, or you can touch it, or you'll die. But the snake said to her, you certainly won't die. God knows that the moment you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree produced delicious fruit, delightful to look upon and desirable to give one insight, she took the fruit and she ate it. She gave some to her husband who was with her. Who and he was with her? <laughs> And he also ate it, and immediately their eyes were opened, and they realized that they were naked, oops, vulnerable and ashamed. So they sewed fig leaves together for coverings. Then Adam and his wife heard the sound of Yahweh God passing through the garden in the breeze of the day. So, um, the in the breeze of the day, or passing through the garden, Here's the footnote. Or going or walking back and forth. Doesn't that remind you of uh, the book of uh, Esther that we did when Mordecai is walking back and forth in front of the gates of the king? And here's God going back and forth repeatedly. And that is the sound or the voice of God that was heard from all directions. It was the voice that walked back and forth repeating the sound over and over. God has no feet nor a body. His voice came into the garden as if it were everywhere at once. So they hid among the trees, concealing them th their, their faces from the face of Yahweh God. So how is, I don't know if anybody in here has ever heard the actual the voice of God. Has anybody heard the actual the voice of God? So the only time I've ever heard it, and it's really embarrassing because I don't remember what he said. I, I, it was probably I could not decipher what on earth he was talking about. It was what I remembered when I got fully awake, which I was fully awake when I started to, you know, you hear it and then you're like fully awake. What was that? Um, is that the voice of God was very full. Like the most full, it wasn't loud like yelling. That wasn't it. It was loud, but it wasn't yelling. And he was full of love. And I was like, whoa. And it was the, but it was the, and that's a good way to say it, the fullest voice I'd ever heard. Yeah. It didn't hurt my ears, but it was like, wah, you're in, like you're in the middle of the Niagara Falls. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. wah, it's all around me. I can hear nothing else. I, I heard him say my name once. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's, how many, have, has anybody else heard, yeah, heard your name? And don't, don't discount that, because he does say our names. And when you, or I'll hear mom sometimes, and I'll think, Holy Spirit, are you talking to me about being a mom right now? You know, so yes, yeah. When I heard the voice of the Lord, 
everything within me came to a Yes. 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 Everything within me, and I knew that I knew, because I had heard that before. Yes. But then everything within me. Everything. Powerful. It's like Samuel. Yes. Like Samuel. Yeah. He kept hearing it. He kept hearing it, and he knew. And, he, and, and there he was, important. a little guy, five years old, you know, running in to Eli. What did you say? What do you so, want? What do you want? <laughs> Can you imagine? So, Romans 5, New Testament. Wherefore, as by one man centered in, in, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men in whom all sinned. 15, through the offense of one, many be dead. 16, the judgment was by one to condemnation. 17, by one, man's offense, death reigned. By the offense of one, judgment came to, upon all men to condemnation. By one man's offense, many were made legally con constituted sinners. So I did, I read, did that out of the King James so you could see how many times Paul says, by one by man, one. by one, by one. So let's read it out of the Passion Translation, which is going to clarify it even further. When Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered the human experience, and death was the result. And so death followed this sin, casting its shadow over all humanity. Because all have sinned. Sin, because we were all in Adam. Where did we all come from? We all came from Adam, right? Mm -hmm. We were in Adam when he sinned. So we all sinned, right? And Eve, I mean, you think about it was, it was both of them, right. Adam and Eve. But Eve was taken out of Adam. Eve was taken we out of Adam. From That's right. And, and, but we passed through Adam first, yep. right? Adam but, but, yes, mankind. all of mankind. Adam was the one that sinned. Eve was sort was of deceived. ignorant about stuff. She was deceived. But Adam, right. he knew the truth. Yeah. And he knew what he was doing was against what God said. Whereas Eve was, she was confused because she even thought you couldn't touch this thing. Right. So and why I, did she get that I don't want to give her any... No. Let her off, <laughs> let her off the hook. No. I don't want to let her off the hook. <laughs> because she, they were walked with God. They could have asked God at any point in time. And I'm sure they knew. But we do get, I mean, listen, if, you know, I've, I've heard people say, oh, if I, you know, if I could go, if I could no, have been the one. No, no, no I tell you what, if I could have been the one, I would have messed it up way worse. Okay. And I believe that with everything because I think we're, we're not walking with the Lord like Adam and Eve were. And they were one flesh. And, and when they, when Adam, when Adam was like the nail in the coffin, yes. Eve was like the, that, but then Adam, like his, his stamp of approval on that was like the nail that took us all that way. It was their joint, that's why agreement is so powerful, yeah. the joint agreement. So, sin entered the human experience, death was the result, and so death followed the sin, casting its shadow over all humanity, because all have sinned. Sin was in the world before Moses gave the written law, but it was not charged against them where no law existed. Yet death reigned as king from Adam to Moses, even though they hadn't broken a command the way Adam had. The first man, see, Adam knew what the truth was and knew what he should do, and they understood We'll go through that when we were going through that. They knew they knew so much because they were they were Adam was genius beyond genius. Eve was genius beyond genius. It was amazing. Okay. Death reigned as king. The first man, Adam, was a picture of the Messiah who was to come. Because he was the son of, of God, directly from God. Okay, the breath of God. The first man, Adam, was a picture of the Messiah who was to come. Now, there is no comparison between Adam's transgression and the gracious gift yeah. that we experience. For the magnitude of the gift far outweighs the crime. It's true that many died because of one man's transgression. How much greater will God's grace and his gracious gift of acceptance overflow to many because of what one man 
Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, did for us. And his free-flowing gift imparts to us much more than what was given to us through the one who sinned. Amen. The one, I just want you to catch that again. One who sinned. For because of one transgression, we're all facing a death sentence with a guilty, uh, a verdict of guilty. But this gracious gift leaves us free from our many failures and brings us into the perfect righteousness of God. Acquitted with the words, not guilty. Death once held its grip by the blunder of one man. Death held reign, reigned as king over all of humanity. But now, how much more are we held in the grip of grace yes. and continue reigning as kings in life, enjoying our regal freedom through the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only yes. Jesus, yes. the Messiah. In other words, just as condemnation came upon all people through one transgression, so through one righteous act, of Jesus' sacrifice, the perfect righteousness that makes us all right with God. That leads us into a victorious life, and it's now available to all. One man's disobedience opened the door for all humanity to become sinners. So also, one man's obedience, thank you, Jesus, opened the door for many to be made perfectly right with God and acceptable to him. It ple okay. And so this principle is going to be run is going to run th clear through the word of God. It pleases God to deal with the human race as represented by Adam, a man made in the image of the likeness of God, pronounced by God very good in fellowship with heaven. Who could have been a more so suitable representative for us? No one. Adam was the best representative. Um, here is the consequences of a broken covenant curse. What, imagine what it was like in the Garden of Eden with no curse. What would it have been like? There was no what? There was no what? Yeah, it would have been heaven on earth. No sin. No death. No sickness. No pain. No suffering. No malicious talking. No what? Animals walking around, right? Yeah. He could have been talking to the animals. Could have, yeah. I believe he was talking to the animals because he named them all. Yeah. Yeah. So it would have been perfect. It would have been perfect. But whenever you have God giving you, this is our covenant, Adam, and then here's what we're going to, here's the covenant of Eden. Here's the covenant. And then he says, okay, you broke the covenant. Um, so you have to come out of Eden. So no longer can you be a part of Eden. Stephanie, that is would, broken. Would there have been any seasons? So there was no rain before the flood. Right. So God, and we did have that. Did we read that scripture? No. I was thinking, yeah. I know I wrote it. Yeah, there was a mist, yeah, yeah, there was a, a dew, that, or yeah. a mist, came up, out of the earth. came up out of the earth and watered the whole earth. And that was how the earth was watered. There was no rain. So... Um, I believe that, and we'll talk about this more, so great question. Um, I believe the whole earth was probably in one big Pangea, one big right. piece of land, yeah. right? Yeah. And all of the, uh, the water would come up, water the whole earth, and it was like a big greenhouse, okay? Mm -hmm. Very similar, because it was warm, the plants grew, whatever. Think about it, no thistles, mm -hmm. no biting bugs, yeah. no... Think about it. And, and he said, we're going to put you in the garden to work. Work was good. Yeah. And work was easy. I'm going to go in the garden. I'm going to work. I love to work. And they didn't need clothes for protection. They right. did not need clothes. You're exactly right. And so think about how good that would have been. You had this wonderful work, this job that you got up and you loved to do it every day. And you wanted to be out there doing it. And it was a learning experience, everything. But there were seasons. I mean, that's why there were stars in the sky, yes. the moon, and all these things. Stuff moved, but it was, it was Edenic. It was different yeah. than what it was after this period of where they sinned. I would say it was more perfect than our seasons, yes. where it wouldn't we be quite understand. as extreme. It wouldn't be like the Antarctic and the Arctic. You know, you wouldn't have right. this. Uh, no. If, if you know, it was all one landmass, yeah. it would have been 
very different the way that, that weather would operate would be completely different than what we have today. Exactly. Completely different. And it would have grown things just wonderfully without thorns and thistles and all of that. So, so the consequences, the promises were, you're going to live in this garden. You're going to have fun working. You're going to enjoy this. And then the consequences um, of that was, oh my goodness, when you break this, you come under a curse. The serpent was cursed more than all the cattle, all the beasts of the field. And, and he cursed the serpent. And he said, on your belly, you're going to eat dust. Enmity between you and the woman, the seed of woman. Uh, will bruise your headship, which was our Messiah, the promise that one day the seed of woman, the Messiah, would crush the serpent head. And that's the first promise of salvation, which is in 315. Um, you shall bruise his heel, the seed of the serpent. This is, why, this is why the enemy hates women so bad and wants to destroy them off the face of the earth. Just as bad as he wants to, just, he wants to destroy Jesus off the face of the earth and, and all the believers he was going after us, that he hates women the most because the promise of this is still there. And the enemy believes in that covenant promise more than we do. <laughs> the seed of the serpent would bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. On the cross, Satan bruised the heel of Christ, causing his death. Bruising suggests something that was not ultimate or final. But Christ died on our behalf, may, being made for the sin, uh, being made sin for us. He bore our judgment upon Calvary's cross, and in doing so, he bruised his heel, although wounded. The damage done to Jesus was not final, for he came back from the dead three days later. Though this has been the principle in which the method by which God has acted all through time, the young earth and created beings were cursed because of the sin of the one representative, Adam. This is what God uses. The patriarchs, or the Melchizedek and men <laughs> of God, were responsible for their family tribe. In consequence of Achan's one sin, the whole of his family were stoned to death. The high priest acted on behalf of a whole nation. The king is held accountable for the conduct of his subjects. One acting on behalf of another. So this is where that principle starts. And I, this is actually a, a curse to us. Because when one acts on, thank God for Jesus, one, that one, acted on behalf of all of us. But boy, right now, we are under a system where one acts for us, and we don't have a say-so in that, right? One responsible for many is the basic principle, both of human and divine government. We cannot get away from it. Wherever we look, it stares us in the face, and it's true today. If our president betrays Israel, we in America will see, we'll see the, the, the uh, correction. So it's true of so many things. This is why we must pray for our government. This is why we must be involved in our government. If the Lord is dealing with you to run for office or just to go speak at the school board, or whatever, whatever, just do it. Write a letter. You know, I read one time, and I think of this when I write letters to people. One letter is worth a thousand voices. Yes. Yeah. Because so many people don't write letters, but you're speaking for them. So I want to encourage you, when you write a letter, you may as well be writing a thousand letters. It's powerful. Write letters. Tell them what you're thinking. <laughs> Be respectful. But do, but do. I want to encourage you. All right. Let's bless the Lord and let's pray. I, I want you to see that today we are in covenant with the one true, the most wonderful God. So we reap so many benefits of this. And we want to know these benefits so that we operate in them, right? And that we don't discount them but also that we honor and respect the God who made these covenants with us. The only one who ever broke covenant was man. Yes. We break covenant. God never, ever yeah. broke covenant. And we'll talk um, one of these weeks. We'll act out covenant. I don't think it'll be next week, but we'll act out the covenant actually up here, kind of like we did last week, and we'll, we'll talk about what the benefits are of Jesus and his covenant with us. First, we'll talk about the covenant that they, they did in the Old Testament, and we'll walk it out, and then we'll talk about what, what it means to be under covenant with Jesus, with Yeshua. Yes? Can I give a testimony real quick? Oh, yes, please do. Please do. Uh, Psalms 34, 7 says, when, Yet when holy lovers of God cry out to him with all their hearts, the Lord will hear them and come to rescue them from their troubles. Um, Chris has been having, my husband's been having 
some health issues and we've been here and there and, and his insurance from his work and you know makes me pull my hair out and this doctor doesn't want it and that doctor that he's assigned to doesn't even exist and <laughs> so yesterday I was sitting at the kitchen table and I was just like and Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeshua. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeshua. Yeshua. And for three, four minutes, I just said Yeshua. Yeah. And I picked up the phone, and for me to call somebody is, yeah. you don't realize all that's involved in it. And I got a hold of a wonderful lady. She's like, oh. Well, we do this, and then we do this, and we do this, and then we do this. We can get you into a doctor today. Wow. wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but you need to talk to this nurse. So I got nurse Chris. <laughs> and then I went up, went and woke up the other Chris. Uh -huh. And they talked. And she's like, get your pants on. Get to this doctor in Erie. Wow. We drove all uh -huh. the way to Erie wow. for this doctor. And he was so kind. Praise God. He, Praise are you God. ready? He listened. Yes. Oh, that's good. Praise the Lord. And he's like, we're going to go this direction. We're going to do this, this, this. And Chris is already feeling better. Good. But it was like, and I apologize for walking in kind of as a storm. But all the way here, I just, Yahshua. Yahshua. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and I just couldn't get away from it. And it was just when I cried out, he rescued me. Amen. Amen. So that's the covenant God we serve. Amen. So when we call upon the name of the Lord, he hears and he answers. So, Father, we just thank you that you're Yahweh. What is it we breathe in? Yah. Yahweh. We breathe out. Yahweh. So our breath is just calling upon the name of the Lord. This is the covenant God who doesn't break covenant. This is the God that we love, and this is the God that we serve. And when we have problems, we say, God, you're the covenant God. I look back on your faithfulness. You've never changed your, you've never been unfaithful once. I have been, I repent for those unfaithful times, but Jesus, right now, I trust you. I trust your faithfulness. I trust in the covenant that you've made with me. And Jesus, on my part, I want to be a covenant-keeping person. I want to be the covenant-keeping lover that loves mm -hmm. this Yeshua, this Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That you're my very breath. Mm -hmm. So, Father, right now we repent for the times when we've broken covenant with you, where we've not recognized the covenant that you've made for us. You've not, we've not recognized the plan. But Jesus, thank you that you're faithful even in our unfaithfulness. You're faithful every time. Thank you, Father. Let's just put our hands out and let's just receive from the Lord right now. We just receive from the presence of you, Yeshua, Yahweh. We receive your, your faithfulness. And we receive your forgiveness for when we've messed it up. God, we thank you. We thank you for your great love for us. Thank you, God, for your great covenant with us. We've only started. We've only looked at a couple of covenants. But they just get better and better and better. So, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the loving God. You are the loving Father. Oh, thank you, Father, that you love us so much. That you wrapped us in your son. Oh, this God, this Father, who are you? Show us who you are. Teach us your ways. Oh, Lord, I want to love you better. I want to love you rightly. I want to love you carefully. Because I, I want to love you like you love me. So, Father, help me. Help me. Oh, we yes. love you, Lord. Yes. yes, you are. Thank you, God. Now, Lord, we just thank you for the blessings. I bless these, your people. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance. Oh, Father, we're so grateful that you're smiling at us. You're not frowning and looking down. You're not upset and shaking your fist. You're smiling at us. You lift our countenance and you say, look at me. I'm smiling at you because I love you. Let me tell you a story. One day, one night, it was the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep because I had just been through one of the most difficult meetings that I had ever been in my life. Somebody had come after me so hard, went after my who I was as a person, destroyed me as a person, didn't like how I smiled, didn't like how I laughed, didn't like how I talked, <laughs> didn't like anything. <laughs> it was like, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I'm up in the middle of the night, and I turn on Christian TV, because I'm just weeping. I'm don't, I don't have anything else to do. Turn on the TV. Jack Hayford's on. Oh, beautiful. Jack Hayford comes up to the camera. I, this had to be for me. <laughs> and he looks right at the camera. And he says, I want you to put your hands on your face like this. Put your hands on your face. Now lift up your face toward God. And just know that he's got his hands on you. And that he's lifting up your countenance on his countenance. And he's looking at you straight in the face. And he loves you. And I'm telling you, he was talking directly to me. Yes. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> <gasps> he loves you with an everlasting love. He never changes his mind about you. And he lift his, lifts our countenance. And he smiles on you every day. Because you're his face. Thank you, God. Thank you. So, Father, we just thank you for the favor of heaven that is upon each person in this room. And upon all those we love and care about and those surround us, this neighborhood, you're around us, you're around our neighbors, our city. You love us, God. We love you, Lord. We ask, God, that your shalom will be upon our city and upon our homes. In Jesus' name, upon our vehicles, upon our animals. In Jesus' name. We thank you. Can I say after that, I went in and went to sleep. <laughs> because the rest of God came upon me. Just like that. Sabbath rest, Shabbat. When you rest, when the peace of God surrounds you, all of a sudden it's like, I can sleep. And I went to sleep. And when I woke up, things looked different. Whenever somebody's saying, I don't think I can make it through tomorrow. I'm like, hold on. Hold on. Tomorrow is different. Yes. It's a different day. He yes. has whole new grace. He has yes. whole new mercy. He has whole new faithfulness. Yes. Say that to others, okay? Mm -hmm. We are the ones who get that word out because it is so big, mm -hmm. so huge. I love you guys. Bless you. If you want to give, there it is back there. <laughs> if you want to give, you can always give. <laughs> Just know it goes directly into yeah. projects.